This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by Lumosity. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Ask the Buffalo, the show where you can ask me, Ashley Esqueda, any question you might have from the wide world of technology. Every Tuesday, we put up a call for questions on technobuffalo.com. You can leave your question in the post comments, or you can send them to me at any time of the day or night at technobuffalo or at Ashley Esqueda on Twitter. But make sure you use the hashtag AskTheBee so I can see it, and usually I answer between three and five questions every episode. Let's get answering. This is Ask the Buffalo. Techno Buffalo user Merica asks, Hi, Ashley, what is your perceptive point of view now that Apple will most likely join Samsung in the plastic phone market? Obviously, a lot of people have, you know, gotten on Samsung's back about using plastic for the backs of their phones. But we have to remember that the iPhone 5C is going to be an emerging market device, meaning it's going to be inexpensive. It's meant to be plastic. I don't think that they would want to use something like glass on the back of a device or anodized aluminum. Of course, nobody would get on Samsung for making one of their smaller, lesser phones have a plastic back. But of course, if it's a flagship, you want it to have the most premium quality materials possible, don't you? I mean, that's the thing with me and Samsung. That's the reason why I'm not a huge fan of the SGS4's design, but to each his own, some people really love it. And of course, it is removable, which means you can switch out the battery. Twitter user Tech for Geeks asks, so the Moto X was unveiled today. Will this be a hit to the market considering there are other Google powered smartphones that are more up to date with software and internal hardware? The Google Edition 1 and S4, for example. Thanks. We are going to have a Moto X that is a Google Play Edition device, so I don't think that we should be worried or I don't think it'll be a hit to the market. Uh, I do think it's very interesting that Motorola is kind of aiming for a mid-range large market with the Moto X as opposed to their droid line, which is very high-end flagship specs. But I'm really curious to see how that Moto X Google Play Edition does sell. Twitter user Gadget Guru HD says, what are your thoughts on the Moto X? Is it worth the 199 price tag? And do you think we'll see a lower Google Play Edition price? I don't know about the lower Google Play Edition price. I know some people had suggested that maybe people who are buying the stock version of the Moto X, the black or white version without any customization should get a break on price. However, at the end of the day, I don't think that makes sense because then you're kind of killing the reason to get it customized. So if you're ch kind of charging people a premium for those custom device modifications, then it kind of doesn't make sense. And I don't think anybody would pay the extra, you know, let's say 50 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever to get it customized. As for the Moto X itself, I think, again, like I said, it's, it's very much targeted at a broad audience. So this is not a phone necessarily, necessarily, for you and me. We are tech nerds, we are hard, die hard gadget people. We want to know the specs, we want to know everything about the device. It's got to be the best of the best of the best. Uh, and we're willing to pay for that. However, this phone is $199 on contract, which is a little bit brutal for anybody looking for a device, especially now that we've seen the HTC One down to $99 on contract and the SGS4. So this is definitely a really interesting move by Motorola and not one that I'm sure will pay off. So it'll be really interesting to see how this device actually sells when it comes out for all five carriers. At Mew Felix asks, how do you judge Samsung's manipulation of benchmark tests to get a higher score? This is a kind of scandal that happened earlier this week where it was revealed that Samsung was manipulating their devices to get higher benchmark scores. But I think at the end of the day, we put too much stock in these ridiculous, silly benchmark tests. It's sort of like when sites do things like run special video software to loop a video over and over and over again to kill the battery. I mean, for me, that's not how people use a device in real world. And the thing is, is regardless of what a benchmark score is on a device, at the end of the day, it really boils down to how the device uses in your hand during the day while you're out and about. You're not gonna say to somebody, yeah, man, this, this phone, benchmark 12,564. You're never gonna say that to somebody, but you are gonna say, this phone is so fast, it is so smooth, I love it, I use it every day, and I've never had it slow down. So I think we put a little bit too much stock into benchmarking, but for the people who really do put a lot of stock in it, I do think it's a little bit, obviously, it's cheating if it's the case. I mean, allegedly, Samsung is doing this, so um, I don't think it's very cool. 
So if you're doing it, Samsung, you should stop. There's nothing I love more than finding new ways to make myself a little sharper upstairs. So I'm pretty excited about Lumosity. It's kind of like CrossFit, but for your brain and with fun games based on neuroscience to help improve its performance. You can build your own training program to help enhance your memory and attention. And I think we all know we can use a little more focus in the world of YouTube, videos, apps, and oh, shiny. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Obviously I need some more work but it's easy to see where I stand with Lumosity's detailed training summaries. I can keep track of progress and see areas where I need improvement. Over 40 million users have experienced the brain sharpening power of Lumosity, and you can too. Start training with Lumosity right now and discover what your brain can do. Check out www.lumosity.com techno for instant access and make sure you use that link so that you can support our show. That's it for this week's Ask the Buffalo. Thank you so much for watching. Please give the show a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. And check us out at technobuffalo.com for all the latest and greatest tech news. Until next week, I'm Ashley Escada. See you next time. That's it for this. Oh my God, Ralph, why do you hate us? You really did. Thank you. You were, you were choking to death back there. Hey guys, Ashley here. Just wanted to let you know that if you liked what you just saw, we've got two other shows that go live every single week. Redinger's Rants, where John totally goes nuts about issues that bug him across consumer technology, and Rumor Roundup, where he tells you all about the best rumors in the world of tech. So click the text below that says subscribe, and if you want to check out either of those shows, click right over here. See you next time. Thanks for watching.